After noticing scratches appear on her boy, a mother had a camera installed to get to the bottom of the matter. After reviewing the footage though, she was left crying and feeling more guilty than ever, knowing that she had put her trust into the wrong party. Bo Bun was a one-year-old boy with no shortage of love. Around him, he had his adoring mother Lindsay, who was a school principal, his father, a stay-at-home dad, and three pets, two dogs and a cat, who all showered him with love. The animals had come from Bo's father, who was still in the process of convincing Lindsay that they were safe. He assured her that they had been around his nieces and nephews on many occasions and had never shown any sign of danger. But Lindsay's instinct told her that there was something to be worried about, especially after the birth of Bo. When the family ran into money problems and Bo's father was forced to go back to work, they needed to hire a babysitter for a few days. With all of Bo's grandparents living in different parts of the country, a stranger was their only option. After interviewing a number of candidates, they settled on a middle-aged Estonian lady named Victoria. Lindsay took her on a tour of the house, showing her where everything was and giving her a few instructions to ensure safety. One of them was to lock the animals in a different part of the house until after one of them returned home. Victoria appeared friendly, professional, and committed. All seemed to be sailing smoothly for the first few days until one Thursday afternoon when Bo's mother returned to find her son with a couple of scratches on his right arm. Coupled with a small bruise on his left, Lindsay noticed straight away and asked Victoria what had happened, but all she got back was a shrug. Victoria told her that Bo had been in the cot for almost the entire day and that those injuries must have happened days earlier, before she began her job. However, Lindsay was certain that these scratches hadn't appeared under her watch. She bathed Bo herself and would have noticed. Another theory she proposed was that one of the animals had found its way into Bo's cot. Unwilling to accuse someone without evidence, Lindsay kept silent. Victoria had a top rating on the website they had used, along with several glowing reviews. Lindsay and her husband spent the entire night baby-proofing the apartment. Maybe this did have something to do with the animals, they thought. After all, their cat was known to hunt wild animals, and their two dogs were Rottweilers, traditionally considered one of the most aggressive canine breeds. But Lindsay decided to set up a camera in Bo's room, just in case, without telling Victoria. She wanted to get to the bottom of things, and once she rushed home the following day, she was ready to find the truth. Scrolling through the footage, Lindsay quickly made her way to the first hour without noticing anything out of the ordinary. Bo was in his room, sitting in the cot, while Victoria seemed to be spending most of her time glued to her phone. But then, the babysitter wandered into Bo's room, only for a second time since arriving. In one hand, she held her phone, scrolling through social media. With her other hand, she reached out to grab Bo, who gently pushed her arm away. That's when Victoria seemed to snap, snatching at the baby to try and pull him closer. Her long pink manicured nails swiped at him like a claw. Not having any success, Victoria put her phone down and became even more aggressive, roughly pulling Bo towards her. Lindsay was cupping her hands over her mouth in disbelief, silently crying. She had entrusted someone with her son for the first time, and now she felt an overwhelming sense of guilt. But that's when something even more surprising happened. Seemingly from nowhere, the family's cat Rooster leapt up onto the cot, moving swiftly through the wooden bars. Then, he positioned himself between Victoria and Bo, scratching at the babysitter's hands, eventually causing her to back off. After that, Victoria largely left the baby alone, only popping her head in to check every half an hour or so until Bo's father arrived home and took over. Lindsay looked over her shoulder to Rooster, who was sitting in the corner of the study, silently watching her. Now she felt even guiltier. She had never entirely trusted Rooster, and that was why she had instructed Victoria to lock the door on the animals. She was thankful that the cat had somehow found a way to escape the locked room and run into Bo's. It was almost as though she had sensed something was wrong. After seeing the footage, Lindsay reported Victoria to child services and the babysitter had her license taken away, meaning that she was no longer authorized to take care of children. In a phone call, Victoria tried to defend herself and even put the blame on the cat. According to her, it was actually Rooster trying to attack Bo and Victoria who saved him. She called the cat crazy and out of control, threatening to sue Lindsay for putting her in danger. What she didn't know, though, was that the entire thing had been recorded. The police showed her the footage and interrogated her, and after being questioned for hours, she admitted to being jealous of little Bo and his idyllic family life. The scary thing was that if it weren't for that footage, Lindsay may have believed her. Victoria had a near-perfect record, and Lindsay had already been doubting herself about the safety of the animals. 
making the case harder for himself. Rooster had never acted with much affection to anyone, especially Bo. He had looked at the baby with suspicion upon his arrival at home. Between the two dogs who chased him around and a strange new baby, Rooster had his work cut out for him. But after the incident with Victoria, the two had begun to grow closer than ever. His heroic actions earned him new privileges. Rooster was now allowed in Bo's cot, where he spent most of his time. The two dogs looked up from the floor enviously, puzzled how Rooster had scored a place up there. Lindsay and her husband should have noted this behavior from the dogs, because it was about to become very dangerous. After hiring a new babysitter and making sure that this time she could be trusted, life fell back into a rhythm. But this peace didn't last long. While the new babysitter was great, the dogs had been growing increasingly jealous of Rooster, who seemed to be the family's favorite animal now. Bo's father had owned the two Rottweilers years before he was married or had children, and they had never been outwardly aggressive toward anyone. In fact, they had generally been the two pets who loved to lap up all the attention, while Rooster remained elusive and introverted. But being confined to a different part of the house, their patience was wearing thin. To top it off, the cat had now been elevated into the good graces of their owners, leaving the two dogs as second-class citizens. One afternoon, all that culminated in a moment of rage, where one of the Rottweilers, Buck, charged his way onto the couch where Bo was sitting in his spot. Nobody had fed the dogs that morning, and Buck was crazed. The babysitter had only left for a moment to grab a cup of tea, and he took advantage of that moment of distraction to strike. From the kitchen, the babysitter turned around just a second before Buck reached Bo, her eyes widening in fear and letting out a scream. Buck's lips were rolled up, and his sharp teeth were exposed, threatening to bite the baby, who was helplessly strapped into his chair. Buck was on a collision course with him, until, once again, Rooster appeared out of nowhere, like a superhero. Descending from the top of the couch, Rooster intercepted Buck forcefully, with a scratch through the air that sent the dog scrambling off the side of the couch and onto the ground. It was enough time for the babysitter to arrive and pick up Bo. This was now the second time that Rooster had saved Bo, and this time from two of his siblings. The babysitter apologized profusely when the parents arrived home, but Lindsay recognized she had been the one who had failed to lock the door properly. After that accident, the family signed up both dogs for professional training and tried to be more attentive towards them. They didn't want them to feel abandoned or unloved anymore and were determined to restore the balance in the house. And after that moment, there were never any more doubts about Rooster's intentions. He grew closer than ever to Bo, continuing to sleep in his bed for years to come, just in case anything dangerous happened again. What an incredible story. What do you think of keeping pets around young babies? Would you ever leave your child unsupervised with two big dogs and a cat? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.